Hello, everyone. My name is Miriam Lazarte. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And uh, today we have another info session. I know some people are going to pop up, uh, you know, during the, uh, during the call, but that's okay. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, make a quick introduction and hopefully, you know, having some of the, uh, you know, view participants here and attendees in this um, session, having some questions about our programs and how, uh, you know, we interact with the startups. So first of all, I like to do this presentation very, you know, interactive. So if you have any questions, comments, you can always open your microphone or put it in the chat. And I'm using just the website because it's easy to navigate uh, for me. So if any one of you have, uh, you know, any questions later on, you can actually go to the website and you will find out more information in our website. It will be easy for you to remember as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, as LATAM Startups, it's, it's a community of international startups. Um, uh, many of you coming from uh, different countries or uh, some that are already here in Canada know that the word startup sometimes can, uh, can be problematic depending where you are. <laughs> we are not working with startups in ideation. We work with startups in expansion. That means that, you know, startups that are coming to our community, they already have uh, some kind of MVP, sales traction, uh, and, you know, they, they already kind of like a proven market somehow. The only type of startups that we have uh, probably in, let's say, less advantaged stages are the ones that are working currently in biotechnology, green tech or clean tech, which, you know, commercialization can be a little bit more difficult. Um, but other than that, we are agnostic sector. So we have, uh, you know, startups in many type of, uh, you know, uh, technology sectors that can affect different actually traditional sectors. So if you go to our website, you will see that we have different types of programs. And I'm going to go quickly through the programs that we currently have, the ones that are going to open up soon, uh, you know, giving some information. Uh, I know most people that are interactive with our community, actually, uh, you know, they are very much interested in the startup visa program. So I'm going to step up in that, uh, you know, part of the information and uh, give you some insights about the startup visa program as well. Uh, but, you know, it, the programs that we have actually are here. So we have, as you can see, the startup programs that are aimed for startups, uh, international technology companies that are already expanding and they are looking at North America as a first point of entry for global markets. Uh, startups that are coming a part of this program is because they are aiming to get to uh, the startup visa program in phase three in the acceleration program. Then we have the corporate program, which is very similar to the startup program, but it's for startups or, or uh, you know, medium sized uh, corporations. They can be technology or not. Most of them are technology. They are coming to have a foot in, in, in North America. Either way, because they want to open an office or they want to improve technology. So when they come to us in the corporate program, they are not necessarily interested in the startup visa program. They are interested in to have an office and they are interested in to have probably a team in North America that can help them to get more customers in North America or again, improve technology and be more competitive in their home countries. The Newcomer Accelerator Program is a program that is aimed to be for newcomers that already have a permanent residence in Canada or they have become just recently citizens. And they actually, uh, you know, want to accelerate business in uh, Canada. So this is a program that we work very close with uh, in NRC IRAP. Uh, and this is in, in pilot mode. We actually just finished up with a group of uh, startups in this station. It will be open very soon. And the Elevate program is more for newcomers that want to get skills in the market. So this is not for technology companies. This could be for just new, you know, newcomers in Canada, but they have to be located in Canada. Cannot be located in other place, has to be located in Canada. 
So I'm going to elaborate a little bit more in the startup program because it's the one that is connected with the startup visa program and is where we get the most questions uh, when we get inquiries um, you know, every day. So this program is designed to be in three phase, uh, you know, market validation, market entry and acceleration. And we do this in order to do our own due diligence, make sure that the company actually has a potential for the startup ecosystem here in Canada. So they actually, you know, will be investing time and money wise. Uh, we don't want you to be coming to Canada just to figure out that your business is not going to work here. So there are many questions that we always uh, get around a startup visa program on how to get to phase three. Some of the questions you actually are going to get in our website, you know, the frequent asked questions uh, part. So you will find there um, most of the answers uh, and questions that we get every single day. But I'm going to tell you how the program works, and you know, from phase one to phase two to phase three. Uh, there is no way for you to skip up to phase three directly. Uh, we need to validate all businesses. So when people are, um, you know, companies are applying, they apply from phase one. Um, usually it's because um, we have, uh, you know, different type of businesses that they have validated at home, uh, the type of customer, the type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, traction that they have. But many times I can tell you that the assumptions that you have about North America in general very different, a different market. So we need to validate that your assumptions are actually correct. And what the thing, the, the type of business that you want to bring here is going to work at the same level. So in this phase, this is a one month phase. And you know, in this phase, we are basically uh, reviewing with you what is the legal framework that you require in order to bring your company here, you know, the corporation part of the company, how you can immigrate as an entrepreneur, Different from a startup visa program, you have other options, you know, to immigrate as an entrepreneur. And sometimes, you know, a startup visa program is not for every single entrepreneur that wants to come to Canada. Uh, customer discovery in North America, of course, you know, making sure that the customer profile is going to be the same. Many times it's not. Many times it's not. And this is why we have the session in, in place. Marketing in North America, networking, uh, international business plan. I know this is not the most popular one because people don't like sometimes to be working again in business plans, but this is going to be essential when you are entering to Canada. Um, either way, you are reaching out investors, you're reaching out, uh, you know, grants or subsidiary in the market, you are going to require a business plan. And of course, financial forecast, making sure that you have the right budget to come here and projecting well yourselves and understanding the angel investment and funding sector in Canada is critical for all companies that come into our phase one program. At the end of phase one, we are um, hoping that the companies will have a very good idea of what they require, uh, you know, in order to come to Canada, that they have a plan in mind that we can put in place. And that's what we do in phase two. But in phase one, when people finish, uh, you know, they finish with a diagnosis of the company. And in that way, companies will know, you know, get a, an extra feedback from us, uh, from the mentors that are involved, um, you know, during the time of the program. And then you, uh, you're supposed to have a plan. Uh, as a nonprofit organization, we don't take equity over any startup, but we actually, you know, charge a fee for every single phase. So the fee is here. The cost of the program for every single program is in the website. It's $2,500 American dollars for up to five co-founders that come up to, uh, you know, come to our program. So many times I get the question, is this fee just for, uh, you know, uh, for the whole startup or is that fee that is, uh, you know, for uh, every single co-founder? This is for the whole company that's coming to the program. Uh, so phase two here, uh, you know, once uh, startups are sure that, you know, this is the step that they want to take and they don't have a big risk, financial risk in particular, to enter to this market, then, you know, um, most of them, the ones that want to enter, enter into phase two. 
And in phase two is more like a hands-on uh, uh, program. You know, we are here basically uh, working in focus groups, working in pitch sales uh, practices, you know, um, understanding better how to do sales and negotiation with uh, customers and partners in Canada. We are talking about intellectual property uh, because it's essential. And it, for those that are entering to start a visa program, they will require this um, no matter what, they require intellectual property. And of course, understanding a little bit better, you know, how to get into grants and investment, you know, a little bit deeper in this area. We also connect with other uh, in programs in, in Canada, in particular in Ontario. Uh, so people will have, uh, you know, an idea of what other resources and tools they have around. This is a two uh, months program. And then same as the other program has a cost, uh, is $5,000 for two months up to five co-founders. Once you finish this program, you will have um, a meeting with the board of directors of LATAM Startups and the board of directors will decide whether or not this is a good time for the startup to enter into phase three. In phase three is when startups uh, start the acceleration process. And at the beginning of phase three is when we give the letter of support uh, not at the end, because many people also ask us uh, about this part, you know, and, and then if, uh, you know, the startups enter to this program is going to be a six months program uh, with, you know, totally focused in sales, um, grants, you know, and funding in, in particular. So the criteria is actually in our website, you can actually look at that part and make sure that, you know, your um, a company meets the criteria. Uh, we just closed, uh, you know, applications for phase one uh, for the group that is entering now in April, but now we are in the waiting list for applications that are going to come in July. Uh, so if you want to enter to the waiting list, and, uh, you know, many times we get also the question about, uh, can we have a, a, a call uh, with you or, you know, just, uh, you know, a, a discussion about my business is way better when you actually enter into the waiting list, um, put us, uh, you know, in, in contact with information about your company so we can evaluate because we get around um, 10 to 11, 12 calls per day. <laughs> it's very difficult to, re to answer every single question by call. Um, so I know that somebody in the, uh, in the audience has a question, Safar, you, you can open your mic. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh Hi, this is Zafar here. I have a question. Uh, so your program is divided into three parts. Yes. Uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Now, there are a lot of other incubators who also provide the very similar, like like two phases, phase one and phase two. So suppose if we have done phase one from one incubator, and yeah. for any reason we have missed out to in going to the second phase, can we apply straight away to phase three with you guys? It may be a possibility, actually, you know, if you, uh, we never have the case that I have somebody else from another incubator coming to our incubator necessary for this part. Uh, but, you know, we are open to evaluate those type of cases. Most of the time I have startups that they probably have done sales in North America and they think that they are ready uh, for, for this phase, but sometimes they figure out that they they have missed a lot of information. So. If um, if you have that type of case, uh, the best the best way you can do is to explain it that in the waiting list. You know, you will see a form there, and explain what you have done already in phase one in another uh, program in the market, and then you know we can certainly evaluate that case for sure. Oh, fantastic! And sorry, before before you go. Uh, you said you're basically it's an agnostic uh, kind of uh, thing, things you have so. For example, if, if I bring in an uh, edtech uh, uh, platform, does it work for you guys as well? Are you open to any uh, technology platform or is there any restrictions on that? We don't have restrictions as far as it's a technology company has intellectual property and you guys already have certain amount of traction in particular for edtech, it's not going to be as um, challenging as for example, clean tech or uh, you know biotechnology. So we are expecting to have some users or sales already in, the, in in your home country or in Canada or North America, you know, depending, you know, some companies are a little bit more advanced than others. 
Uh, so just to give you an idea, we already have, if you go to our, um, you know, clients portfolio, we have several companies, well, not several, but a few of them are ed tech companies. And if you can figure out, you know, um, it basically um, if it's a good match for you, for example, we have in the past, um, uh, I forgot, Servoy is an ed tech company and we had Lightosh as an ed tech company. So from the portfolio, you can see, you know, which one, um, which one are ed tech uh, companies, but for sure, like we have that had in the past. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So I'm not sure if anyone has any questions additional, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, the, the description that we have already in our website, but you can interrupt me anytime as I mentioned. Um, so that's the startup program, as I mentioned, uh, the corporate program is a little bit more customized. It's different because people are not aiming to get into startup visa. They are not aiming necessarily to, uh, you know, be um, entering into the market to immigrate into Canada. The, uh, sometimes the companies that I have here, they have some way, a different type of immigration process, which we can be helping or not, you know, depending of, you know, they already have been in contact with an immigration lawyer. Um, but the, the, the point on this part is that they are not aiming for a start visa. They aiming for maybe other type of immigration process or no immigration process at all. So this type of program is more customized, doesn't have a structure, a, like a, a box structure, like, you know, the startup phases. Um, it, it can come anytime, you know, it's, it's open to come in rolling basis. And the type of corporations we have in this program, the ones that are interested in this program are medium-sized corporations. So they are looking to improve technology. They are looking to have a better presence in North America. And we are, we are basically offering, uh, you know, seven essential um, services for them from legal perspective up to building community, you know, getting talent in the market, getting an office and things like that. Uh, so this is worth it to explore for people that are interested in this part. Um, the other program that we have opening up soon, and we may be announcing this in, in the next days, is the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program, which is again for newcomers, people that already have permanent residence or citizen, uh, citizenship in, in Canada. So if anyone has any questions about this particular program or the Elevate program, you can let me know. I'm not going to go deep on this because normally this is, uh, you know, people don't go into these questions per se. Now, uh, the other things that you, you probably would like to explore, yeah, I have two questions now. So I have um, a Jawed. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correctly, I'm sorry. Yeah, hi, uh, good evening to you. This is uh, Jawed uh, from uh, Dubai and you pronounced it perfectly well. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I pronounce the name well, but okay. So first, uh, uh, it, thank you very much for uh, conducting this session and letting us know the finer details of it. Yeah. One question is, how do you support with regards to work permit uh, in case in case we 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 uh, get selected by your uh, uh, by by your board of members or group, whatever it is? Uh, right. How does the selection? process happen from then do you help us in getting the work permit or the or the pr yeah basically you know if you get selected into a startup visa program what we give is a letter of support right and the letter of support serves for both uh work permit and permanent residence uh it's, it's a it's a bit of a discussion on how you can you know once you get into that step because that's that's kind of the final step in our uh program and how do you are going to work out that part? You know, there are several recommendations we give. This is important for everyone in the audience to understand that, you know, there are about 50 incubators, accelerators, and angel investment firms that are designated organizations for this data visa program. Most of us are very much collaborative. So we are, you know, we know each other, we know in the network, and sometimes we kind of like, help each other in the programs, depending on you know, who it is and uh, how well we know each other. Um, but one important fact that you need to know 
is that the letter of support is what it's called, letter of support. It doesn't guarantee you that you are going to get a permanent residence in Canada. At the end of the day, it's the government of Canada who gives the permanent residence. The letter of support is one of four requirements that you are going to have to get your permanent residence or your work permit. Being said that when you are talking with, you know, or other different incubators and accelerators, one good question is to ask, for example, how many cases are you having approved? You know, how many cases do you have in peer review? In our case, for example, we don't have any case in peer review. So far we have all our, um, uh, you know, cases have been approved <laughs> so far, but we have many in the waiting list. Okay, uh, so it, it, there is many questions around processing times and all that. Um, it, the letter of support help you for the work permit, like help you for the permanent residence, but you still need to have some requirements in your side in order to get to that point, you know, to get to actually get approved for your work permit and permanent residence. And we can, you know, help you guiding you um, based on the experience that we have. We have so far uh, 37 companies in the Startup Visa program. Uh, four of them have been approved already with the permanent residence and um, you know, uh, work permits. Most of them have the work permits done. Um, this is uh, you know, considering that we enter into Startup Visa program at the end of 2019. So we don't have, we just have been running the program for about two years. Uh, and since 2017, we have helped over 130 companies, not, not necessarily all of them have been aiming for a startup visa program. I hope that that answered the question, but if you have any other, just let me know. Wow, that's, that's very gratifying to know, in fact. Uh, uh, one more thing to that question, at which stage do you give the letter of support? Is it right after phase one when, when, uh, when uh, uh, applicants like us, uh, you know, uh, are, are able to meet the criteria of phase one, or do you issue towards phase three or phase two? When do you give out the letter of support? Yeah, so we give the letter of support at the beginning of phase three. Once you get approved uh, by the board of directors, uh, you know, you finalize phase two, you have a meeting with the board of directors, and then the board of directors decide the company is good enough uh, good enough for a startup visa program. Just considering that, you know, the board of directors of Latin startups, uh, actually, uh, you know, they put in the shoes of the government. Um, you don't want to get a, get a letter of support and then find out that the government is not going to approve you, right? <laughs> After passing all, all, all these phases, I'm paying for, for all this. So we are trying to do our best to do the best due diligence and prepare the companies the best possible. Our end, uh, mandate is not for you to get a permanent residence. Uh, our aim mandate is for you to have a good business in North America. So we are going to work as hard as possible to have that happen, you know, to, to, to make that happen. So hopefully that, that will answer. Um, Akshat, uh, do you have questions? Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, My name is Akshat Agarwal. Uh, I just completed the course with the elevate talent on business development strategies yeah and one of one of the purpose was to get into uh, 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 incorporate uh, and incorporate to help them in project management or business development mm -hmm. and uh, so i'm uh, i was dealing with meg welter mm -hmm. uh, yeah. at, at uh, uh, and uh, so far she could not find a suitable match where i can contribute so uh, just I wanted uh, means what is your process means and how long it takes to get into the program uh, to get into the startup visa or you're talking about the elevate program uh, the elevate program as you probably know um, you know when we are doing the match we are we are also considering what the companies are looking for in terms of talent and we present you know different type of resumes and it's from the company, you know, they decide who they want to get in as, as a volunteer. And, you know, we cannot pressure them to get somebody that, you know, they don't want into the company. Um, so, but I'm not sure uh, about the, the time frame of the program is you're talking about the Star Visa program or which one? No, 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 sorry. Uh, so I believe that this course was designed uh, with the Latam startups mm -hmm. based on the requirements of the yeah. corporate. 
corporations. Yeah. Yeah. So business. So I believe there is some requirement you have for the business development strategies to help out any corporate uh, yeah. corporations you are dealing with already. Yeah. So I wonder why you could not find a suitable match when. Uh, it's it's up to the company. We send the resumes, uh, you know, to the company. You are uh, you were doing the elevate program. We sent the resume. So, so uh, at least uh, I expect that you let me know which companies you are dealing with and uh, how many resumes you got. We, or we actually let you know about that. We have the companies listed in our website and I'm pretty sure Meg was kind of dealing with that part. But as I mentioned, it's, it's very difficult to find a suitable uh, you know, match sometimes if the companies don't want to get in, involved with a volunteer person in this area then you know there is not much we can do in this part okay okay that's it okay thank you uh okay so i know i have another uh you know uh, thing in the chat so i'm going to just skip for one minute here in spanish because uh stefania is here stefania que te puedo colaborar tienes de pronto alguna pregunta Hola. Hola, Estefanía. Hola, mucho gusto. Hola, mucho gusto, Hola. Michael. También. Hola. Eh, qué pena. Es que estuvimos en, en, en WeWork, en la reunión de Colombia, y tuvimos interés en, en participar en, en Startup Latam. Eh, nosotros somos una empresa que lleva 12 años en operaciones eh, en México y Colombia. De hecho, en Valle del Cauca, eh, eh, yo era el director de Avianca, de todas las oficinas de, de puntos de venta de Avianca, todas las que se aperturaron, las, las, las desarrollamos nosotros. Eh, la, que, queríamos mirar cómo buscar inversión eh, con inversionistas canadienses. Queremos tener presencia en Canadá. Ya tenemos presencia en, en México. Y pues quisiéramos que nos dieras un poquito. Esa es una buena pregunta. ¿Ustedes, ¿Ustedes entienden bien inglés? ¿Puedo responder en inglés? ¿O prefieren en español? Eh, yo hablo inglés, un inglés intermedio, pero yo creo que sería más adecuado en español para que Michael eh, lo entienda también. Voy a estar traduciendo y pasando switch entre uno y otro, ¿ok? So guys, uh, okay. their question basically is that, uh, you know, they were in an event that we had actually in Colombia just a, a few days ago. So thank you so much for coming to the event. That was really good. Um, it, and they are asking about investors, investors in Canada, uh, you know, how to reach out investors uh, when they, they are bringing the company here. So I'm going to give the answer in Spanish and as well in English, okay? Uh, so the answer in Spanish first. Ustedes no van a tener inversionistas hasta que ustedes no tengan tracción en la entidad canadiense o americana, ¿ok? Lo que mejor van a conseguir va a ser eh, subsidios de gobierno. Eso es por lo que la mayor parte de gente viene y lo que mejor puede la, las personas eh, optar al, al inicio porque ustedes no tienen todavía clientes en la entidad que quieran crear en Canadá, ¿ok? La razón por la cual esto pasa es porque... Eh, la inestabilidad económica y política en, en, en Latinoamérica pone muy nerviosos a los inversionistas en Norteamérica. Es muy difícil que ellos coloquen dinero directamente en una entidad que está basada en Colombia o en México, aunque hay muchos inversionistas latinos e inmigrantes en Estados Unidos que a veces no tienen problema con el riesgo y pueden colocar el, el dinero allá. Pero no diría que es la primera opción para ustedes. ¿Qué? ¿Okay? So I'm going to switch in English right now. So the part of the investment, this is a very good question because uh, you know I always like to be as straightforward as possible with people that are coming to our community. Um, so investors in Canada, they normally don't invest. And I'd say normally like 99.9% .9 of the time don't invest in companies that are located outside of Canada, US, okay? If you have a corporation in Canada, US, you will get the chances to get investment if the corporation starts to have traction in sales or you know, users. If you have a corporation outside of the US or Canada, 
then it's a little bit more difficult because they don't know about the uh, political and economic stability of the country. Um, so it's, it's very difficult for them to understand culturally and politically speaking, you know, the other country and how their investment uh, or his or her, her investment is going to do well in that country. Um, so the best bet that international startups have when they come to Canada is actually accessing two grants, which is free money from the government for Canadian corporations. There are over 100 grants in the market for technology companies, and we get to, uh, you know, um, uh, refer those grants to most of the startups that are in our community. So that's a, a very um, a straightforward advice that I always get to startups when they come to, uh, you know, our programs. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, Samuel has been chatting with uh, Daniel too. So Daniel, yeah, you can see our recording later on in YouTube, but I'm not sure if you have any particular question about, you know, the programs or is that you just wanted to see from the beginning? We were basically talking about the startup programs mainly, you know, in the, uh, um, uh, from the beginning. But if you have any questions, just let me know, okay? So um, here at the Innovation Center, you know, if you go to the website, go to the Innovation Center, you actually can take a virtual tour of how our offices look like, uh, you know, and the, where are we located? We are located just one block from the CN Tower. Uh, we are also embedded in the Ontario Center of Innovation, which is, uh, you know, the Ontario government that is helping, uh, you know, startups, incubators and accelerators to reach out different uh, you know, partners in the market and funding as well. Uh, so we are very well located. Um, here is a list of our clients. Uh, you, know, you can see uh, the ones that have a, currently are in, in the Servisa program and the ones that you know, have become a part of to phase two. Uh, we don't have profiles of the startups in phase one because there are too many that you know, they decide not necessary to have kind of as their house uh, at the beginning. Um, very important for us this year, we're returning in person for the LATAM Startups Conference. Um, you know, it, this is happening just um, a couple of days before Collision Conference. If you don't know about Collision Conference, uh, you know, you should come for sure. Collision Conference is the biggest tech event that uh, happens in Canada. And the LATAM Scars Conference is bringing five unicorns in total. We are about to announce the uh, four unicorn and the other one in the couple of uh, days uh, from now. Uh, so these unicorns are coming to, uh, you know, basically have a tech talk type, uh, you know, with our audience. We just have, you know, limitation in the number of people that we can accept uh, into the conference, you know, coming to attend the conference. We are going to be there on June 17, uh, the CBC um, a, a, a Center. You know, this is the conference center that they have. Um, so just don't miss it. Uh, you can also join the conference virtually if you cannot come in person to Toronto. Uh, but it will be uh, our ninth edition. So this is the ninth year of the conference and it's a big deal for us. Uh, so with that, you know, uh, you can always also uh, look at the about us, you know, learn about our board of directors, you know, who is a part of our team, uh, who is actually currently uh, in our team and who are our mentors. Uh, you know, you, you can connect with them in LinkedIn, you can connect with us in LinkedIn as well, uh, you know, learn a, a little bit more about our background. Uh, we have, you know, white papers available also about, uh, you know, other markets, career opportunities sometimes from our startups or from our own community. And then, you know, uh, we kind of uh, give news also about our community very frequently. Um, so with that, I think I have given uh, 35 minutes already of information. I'm not sure if anyone else has any other questions so far. No more questions? That's good, guys. Uh, so this session is being recorded and is going to be published in our YouTube channel. It's also live streaming right now in Facebook. I really thank you for coming to this info session. And if you have any questions, just send us an email, contact at latamistartups.org. And you know, hopefully uh, you, know, you will become a part of our community very soon. 
So uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the contact maker. Uh, so we are going to be uh, you know, in contact with you as well, Estefania and all of you. Um, uh, Safar, do you have a question? Just, just a last quick one. When, yeah, when, sure. is the next cohort, when is the next cohort starting for the phase one? It's going to be in July, and we are starting to receive applications in May. Although you know, you can see that we have uh, you know a waiting list. Um, so if you want to become a part of the waiting list and be evaluated before we open, uh, you know, calls, we can do that too. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Hope that this information was useful, useful for you and uh, hope to keep connected with our community. Thank you. Bye now.